I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Greetings, grace and peace to you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And welcome to Evolve Online Worship at Bradley United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Advent. I'm Pastor Dave, and I'm coming to you from my home office in Greenfield. I'm Pastor Heather, and I'm coming to you from my home office in Shelbyville. I'm Glenna Shelby, and I'm coming to you from my home office in Greenfield. And I'm Kathy Book. I'm coming to you from downtown Indianapolis. You know, the pandemic has caused and required a great amount of isolation in our lives. But the pandemic is not the only source of isolation in our world. Today, we learn how the grace and mercy of Christ, God's special delivery again this Christmas, can build a bridge from isolation to healthy relationships and community. Welcome to worship. Thank you for your faithfulness. We're glad you're here as we begin the third Sunday of Advent with our Advent wreath meditation. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it's tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season, not just the things that glitter and ash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. Thank you. 
us to worship. This is Psalm 126, a psalm that rejoices in a harvest of joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seeds for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for all those in Scripture who have pointed to Christ, for your prophets Elijah and Isaiah, for other prophets, and for John. We thank you, too, for those in our lives who have pointed to us, to Christ, pastors and teachers, strangers and friends. Give us eyes to see him today among those who are oppressed, imprisoned, brokenhearted, or beaten down. And we give our testimony to how Christ releases and sets free, how he turns ashes into garlands, how he repairs and builds up what was ruined. We too will point others to Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is found in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 and 19 through 28. Listen and hear the good news. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Leave us an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah or Elijah? nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong on his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. May God's blessing be upon the ministry of the word among us here today. Let us pray. Holy One, giver of life and light, as your word is read and proclaimed, illumine our hearts and minds, that by the power of the Holy Spirit our lives may reflect your glory. All this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the news has come in from the castle of Krupp that the lights are all out and the drawbridge is up. And the old drawbridge drawer just said with a yawn, my drawbridge is drawn and it's going to stay drawn till the milkman delivers the milk about dawn. I'm going to bed now. So nobody better come around with a special delivery letter. Now, I think most people love Dr. Seuss. As you can tell, 
I do. Our opening story about the old drawbridge drawer is just a snippet from one of my favorite Sue's stories called The Sleep Book. You actually can uh, find on my Facebook page, if you scroll down far enough, um, a, a, a video of me doing the entire book for my grandchildren and yours. And you know, as I think about uh, this, I, it strikes me that, that not only does everyone, mostly everyone anyway, love Dr. Seuss, but almost everybody loves a special delivery, especially at Christmas time when the UPS driver delivers that big box of unexpected gifts from a distant relative or friend. Why, even as cranky as the old drawbridge drawer seems in our opening story, even he, the story infers, will lower his drawbridge for a special delivery in the middle of the night. He obviously knows the importance of being ready to receive a special delivery whenever it comes. And this is why birthdays are so important to us. This is why we celebrate birthdays, because each one commemorates a special delivery. Uh, uh, it's a reason to let down our drawbridge no matter when that delivery comes. And, and birthdays are so much more than just a celebration of the day we were born or the passing of another year. They are also the celebration of God's creation. Each birth is special because it represents God's creative activity in our world. The same creative activity that breathed life into a formless void in the story of creation in Genesis 1. In the same way, Jesus' birth was a special delivery that represents God's creative activity in our world as well. In Jesus' birth, God became a man a fully human man who walked and talked and ate with his disciples and who still today has the scars on his hands from the nails of the cross where he died for our sin. But he also, Jesus, was fully divine, fully God, even during his time on earth. As his being conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of a Virgin Mary and all of his other miracles suggest, by all accounts, he was an extraordinarily special delivery. In our gospel today, we see John the Baptist announcing once again this week that the advent of Jesus Christ represents not just a very special delivery, but a very special deliverance as well. John says his baptism was a baptism by water, a baptism of repentance, but Jesus' baptism was by the Spirit and fire, a baptism of deliverance. And in this baptism of deliverance from sin and death that we celebrate today, we celebrate, as the psalmist exclaims, with our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah, John came to announce that the coming Messiah had already come in Jesus, bringing good news to the oppressed, binding up the brokenhearted, and setting the captives free. Among Israel in John's day stood the Savior the people did not know. The Savior sent by God to redeem the world from its brokenness, whose birth represents the new creation that we pray we will be able to celebrate today in an appropriate fashion. A new creation worth letting down our drawbridge for this Advent season. Yet it seems our drawbridges are sometimes drawn pretty tight around us these days, and sometimes for good reason. This week, my son's family, who lives in downtown San Francisco, went back on lockdown with the rest of California. In essence, their drawbridge is up. It's closed pretty tight. Even my grandson's preschool is closed. All this is uncomfortable. All this is inconvenient for them. But I think it's for a good reason. 
between San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego, there are millions of people in California at risk. Tightening our drawbridge around us a bit in the middle of a pandemic is probably the right thing to do. On the other hand, we, we sometimes draw our drawbridges too tightly around us, damaging the possibility of relationships and community that God gave to bless us. When we do this, we find ourselves in isolation. We isolate ourselves from others, sometimes just because their skin or politics or theology or sexuality is different from our own. And when we do this, we deny the diversity that God intends to use to bless our world. Like the all, old drawbridge drawer, we've got to be ready for God's special delivery. Drawing our drawbridge too tight can result in missing that delivery. God's special delivery letters of love, grace, relationship, and community. So let's reflect. Is our drawbridge drawn tightly up around us this holiday season? Are we intent on making it stay drawn, shutting ourselves off from the community and world around us, maybe even shutting ourselves off from God? If so, let's hear the voice of God's messenger crying out to us from outside of our castles. For he announces still today, a special delivery waits to dwell in our hearts this Christmas. If we'll let down that drawbridge that keeps Christ at a distance in our lives today, he will come and bathe us in the joy of our deliverance that is represented by the light of our third Advent candle today. As we prepare for the celebration of Jesus's birthday on Christmas Day, we are reminded that in the special delivery of Christ, the drawbridge that spans the great gorge of sin that separates us from God has been let down, and we have been delivered. And so we rejoice in this most special deliverance as we continue to prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts this Advent season. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so as we respond to the proclamation of the word, let us recite together the words of this historic profession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge, come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we lift to God the cares and concerns we have for our congregation, community, and world, let us respond to God with thanksgiving as our prayer course prepares our heart to give thanks to God with our prayers. Let us pray. God who restores, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. So often you have filled us with laughter, even turning tears of sadness into shouts of joy. You send prophets who point the way to justice and show the way to you. We thank you for sending good news to us and repairing so much that we have devastated. In this season of light, we lift up in prayer so many who wait in darkness, people oppressed by poverty and discrimination, by political upheave and dangerous rulers, people imprisoned wrongly and also those imprisoned justly. Right what is wrong among, among us and in us and restore us to you to others, to ourselves. Make the brokenhearted whole again. Comfort those who mourn, repair our ruined cities and all the jostling and jingling of these days. Do not let us lose sight of you or those whom you especially came to serve. People who are in need of healing, people who are overlooked are underdeserved. The ones who are lost and the ones who have made it to feel little are least. Light of the world, live among us always, full of grace and truth. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we close, I would invite you to note that the poster email that brought you to the link to this online worship experience contains another link to our online giving portal. As you feel led, please use that link to give thanks to God with your gifts, tithes, and offerings, or send your offering directly to the church at 210 West Main Street, Greenfield, Indiana. 46140. Thank you once again for your generosity.
And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve your Lord in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us this week. Be blessed. Be safe. Be encouraged. And be God's. We'll see you next week.